And this letter from Canada. Hi, Dr. Craig. I'm a Christian from Canada and a longtime fan. My Aunt Anne Marie says hi. So go ahead and say hi to Aunt Anne Marie. There. Hi, Anne Marie. <laughs> he says, I take issue with one of your arguments for the non existence of an actual infinite on the basis of coin subtraction. While you claim that each time we're subtracting the same number of coins and achieving different results, I do believe I have a rebuttal which I would like addressed. If I subtract all the coins above coin N from my set of infinity coins, can't I formulate my operation as interval of integers from zero to infinity minus interval of integers from N to infinity? While the quantity being subtracted is in both cases infinite, I am in some sense dealing with different values of infinity. No? Sorry, I'm just confused. Okay, let's give an example of this operation. You take, say, the number 7, and you subtract from all of the natural numbers, the natural numbers from 7 to infinity. And he seems to admit that the quantity in both cases is infinite. But then he says, am I in some sense dealing with different values of infinity? Well, no, you're not. The number of numbers from 7 to infinity is identical with the number of numbers from 0 to infinity. So no, this isn't different values of the infinite. It is exactly the same, and that's part of the absurdity of it, I think. If you had an infinite number of coins and you subtracted all the coins above coin number 7, you're left with coin 7 and all those under it, all the way down to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Well, there wouldn't be negative coins, but you would have 1 to 7, so you'd have 7 coins left over. If they corresponded to, to numbers... These the coins, natural numbers. We won't include numbers. negative numbers. Okay. And we won't even include zero because there's no such thing as a zero coin. Right. So let's just start with one. <laughs> yeah. So if you have an infinite number of coins and you subtract all of the coins greater than seven, you're going to have seven coins left over. Yes. But the point is that the number of coins that you began with is exactly the same number as the number of coins that you subtracted. In, in both cases, you're dealing with the same number of coins. You have subtracted infinity from infinity. Now, what I am troubled by is the fact that when you subtract all of the coins greater than, say, five, you have subtracted the same number of coins from the same number of coins, and yet you have two fewer coins. You've only got five coins left instead of seven. If you subtract all of the coins greater than 13, you have subtracted a same number of coins from the same number of coins, but now instead of five left over, you got 13 coins left over. So that you subtract identical quantities from identical quantities and come up with non-identical results, which strikes me as absurd. And the cash value of this, Kevin, is no pun intended. whether or not... <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the the cash value of this is that if an actually infinite number of coins cannot exist, there's nothing special about coins. There couldn't be an actually infinite number of anything, including past events in the history of the universe. <laughs> 